What's up everybody, FSC Trucking. You know, there's a lot of behind the scenes that goes on here in regards with just keeping this place going, maintaining Orwell and all of that. It's a challenge, to be honest, and it will wear you down. Now, I've been trying to figure out how to grow the channel, how to change the content a little, and some people suggest that I bring you guys into my life more, you know, what I do behind the scenes not necessarily personal life but the shop the trucks the other equipment that i have here and and what i have planned from now into the future regarding equipment i have coming and stuff i have that frankly need to get worked on so since i have dave terry uh and maggie maggie welds obviously but maggie got hurt recently so i don't know if we're going to touch base on that or not but yeah she had a little accident so but I do know she's uh, coming off of more overtime at work, her regular job, so she's got more time to be here, which would be great, because to be honest, we could use the help. So what I wanted to do with this video is simply to show you how I got to this moment right here. Orwell's ready to go. I'm literally leaving tomorrow to start taking that big MB equipment down in North Carolina. Now loaded it on, uh, I think Wednesday or Thursday? Yeah, Wednesday. Loaded it Wednesday. Today's Saturday, we're leaving Sunday, Sunday, Monday drive, Tuesday, 10 a.m. delivery. That's the plan. I got this one horse fly. Won't leave me alone. Get out of here. You follow this. Ugh. Horse flies, gotta love them. It's that time of year, right? All right, so with that, I'm not sure exactly how this video is gonna go from now until the end of the video, but I've been running some scenes the last two, three, maybe four days, and it's gonna be all, I'm trying to at least, about it all in a one video of everything I got going on here and now up to this moment where tomorrow we're leaving. All right, enough of me yapping. Let me go lock the doors. Get the heck out of here. Before we go away, I want to touch base on the green APU lid. So I have two of them right now. I got this lid. Now what this is, is stainless and then they clear coated it. Now the other one I had started having some issues. So I went and got a new one from them. But uh, they wanted me to be a test guinea pig over here for this one here. So this one is probably the only one you're going to see. And this is simply brushed aluminum. So there's the old style bottom. And then the lid that's brushed aluminum. So I'm a test subject to see how this holds up versus everything else. That's if anybody noticed, I didn't want to let that go. Also, just to be a complete douchebag. Um, Jen thought it was cute and funny and I think it's silly, but I kept this from Mid-America Trucking Show. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, anybody got a BB gun? You shoot the BB pellets in it, all right? <laughs> all righty. All right, well, Orwell's just about ready to go. I got one more thing, but I'm going to tackle that on the next video because tomorrow I go to Chilton and get loaded. So that'll be the next video. <laughs> Careful not to weld the tool of the car. 
that's a good start. There we go. Let the water cool off. Move on to the next. Alrighty, boys and girls, I figured I'd explain real quick. So the seats that are going in this car are not the seats that actually belong in this car, but I mocked them up with some wood, laid it right here, and it will fit. So I wanted to get all the mounts for the new seats figured before I put the new hole in. So let me go ahead and set the seat in. So this is the new tab, and this is the new tab. They're out of a, they say ST, so they're out of like a Ford or something. Now the good news is they do match the look of the car. So they're pretty badass in that respect. Except the car doesn't have any blue. But I don't know, maybe it will. Now this is severely reclined. Sit it forward, much better. Now it will scoot forward too. Yes, great. That's probably about where I would run it, right about here. Or down as it goes. Oh, there we go. Not bad for an SUV seat in a car. That's the idea. Just getting out of a Lambo or a DeLorean. Legs out, that ass out. All right, boys and girls. How many times have I told you guys that in my line of work, as soon as I make a plan, God seems to laugh and changes my plans. And that's okay. I'm not gonna bitch about the day I was blessed with, right? But I wanna show you some stuff that we've done. Ooh, don't wanna show that yet. So, after I talked to you guys last, um, one thing we did do was we actually pulled the transmission fluid, the oil out of the transmission and changed it. So I put all new synthetic 50 weight in there. Actually, Terry did that. He did a lot of work while I was away doing stuff. So anyway, that's the old oil that came out of it. Pretty rank looking stuff, but nonetheless, it did its job. So now it's time to go. So the transmission, hey, you really can't see crap. But it's full, we pumped it full, ready to go. And then uh, I went ahead and did one other thing. I uh, did a couple of, wanted to do some updates on Orwell there, um, just to try to get stuff in better condition than it has been. Um, yeah, check that out. Bumper's missing. Well, it ain't missing. It's just right there. It's laying face down. So yeah, you a while back, a long time ago in the videos, uh, we showed how I drilled out this bumper, put all the chicken lights in there, and put the uh, brackets on here to go ahead and put a new bumper on there after I hit the deer. But we went ahead and got all new chicken lights on here, all down the, the bottom here. Also, we're replacing these, and here's the new ones I got. You know, same thing. So that's what we got, because these are, they're not as bright. Most of the diodes on the, on the white light are, is uh, not working, so we're going to change them out. So yeah. That's all I'm going to go ahead and do, so let me go ahead and get started finishing this up. Terry ought to be here in a little bit, so we'll see about actually meeting him. So, until then, let's uh, get to work. Alrighty, boys and girls, so now what I've done is, well, me and Terry, I should say, I'm not going to take all the claim. Terry's over there working behind the camera making noise. <laughs> so, what we've done is I put all new, I made all the new harness here, including for the strobes and the uh, fog lights were underneath the bumper. They're underneath here, you really can't see them yet. But then to make it easier, think about it. If I rather replace these lights, it's easier to take the bumper off to work with the wiring underneath here. So what I did was, there's a new connector. Here's a new pin connector. So these will hook together like so. And that way, all you gotta do is unhook the one wire, take the four bolts out, bumper's gone. Crap. Okay, I'll know who stole my bumper. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get the bumper out. Actually first, sorry, I forgot. What we gotta do is I gotta check with a test light which wires work which, because there's 
a three wire cable and then a single wire. I know the single wire is for the uh, marker lights that run all of this. So, say hi, uh, Terry. All right. Terry used to work with Dave back in the day. That's how Terry showed up. Dave changed jobs, so now Dave typically travels, so he's not as available as he used to be. So Terry came in to fill in the slack. He's a good worker, but he's quiet. Which is good, that means they work harder. All right, it's clean this, actually let's, well, we're done with all this. Yeah. All right, let's cut that shit off. One of these is gonna be a ground, and then that blue one, I'm pretty sure feeds the marker lights. Oh. I go. There you go. Cutters. I always use these strippers, but these are whatever you want. I don't care. Nothing you need. You need to needle those. The first thing I ever wired into this truck was the chicken lights, and then the uh, the three wires coming down in a single cable. That went to the. Uh, just the lights if I remember okay. right but that was years ago when I did this so it's very possible I don't remember all right here's your marker lights okay yeah you got that's on the uh, hang on one second yeah that's the single wire okay yeah. all right now the next one's gonna be the fog lights the white ones I'm going to turn that single off. Nope. That's the fog light circuit. Hang on. Alright, now it should, should be on. I had a turn ignition okay, on. That's the red. Alright, so red is fogs? Yep. Alright. Um, there's okay, the green. Green, uh, okay, the green wire. So your black must be ground. Alright, so let me... Hang on, I got a pen right here. So now, just in case we forget, because it's all me, I would forget. That's something I would do. You want to get it? Jim. Go for it. Um. I wasn't here when you took it apart for me. Okay. There's a bolt and a nylon washer. I think it's, it's got to slide that way a little more. Yep. There we go. Ish. Right, where's that? Where's that? that bolt right down there. Got it. I need to replace these with stainless. Just drop the bolt in, it ain't gonna yeah. come off. Just to test it. Plug our connector in. Yeah, I'll show you. The warranty's off, so you plug it in. Me not even get the driveway warranty on this one? No. Damn, drive a hard bargain. All right. Well, let me hop in there and turn some stuff on. Coming markers? No, yep. We got the Christmas tree left, in fact. Alright. Your fogs? Yep. Fogs off, here's the strobes. Yep. Alright. Yippee! You need electrical tape down there and all. Nah. Where the zip ties? Yeah. Hey, 
what's up guys, FSC Trucking. Well, it's the next day from installing the bumper and stuff here. Uh, today is going to be kind of complicated because I got to leave tomorrow with the load we got and I got to shift some stuff around. Um, that means I got to move the repo boat, I got to move the motor home. While I go ahead and do that, I'll explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it and trying to make some sense of all this madness. So with that, let's get Orwell fired up, get the door open. I got to move the goal wing. Yeah, I think I got to move everything today. Well, let's get Orwell out of here, eh?
another hitch for the enclosed. Then we gotta get the other hitch after we move that, but that's for the boat. Somebody made a comment I got too many hitches. Well, possibly too many trailers. Alrighty, may as well turn the fan off, not using the air. Now to me, this is one of the coolest things about these newer trucks. Because I can remember when I was a kid, mom and dad getting real hot with each other. Mom not understanding that trucks don't have rear steer. And dad not understanding it, mom doesn't understand how to back up trucks or trailers, so it got real ugly. And that's became my job as a kid to hook the trailers up to the trucks with my dad. My dad would drive and I would direct, but we had a little system. He told me what to say, you know, left, right, and if I wanted it left or wanted it right, that was full turn all the way, full turn the other way, or straight. And that's the only, only thing we had, and it was forward or back, and that was it. It was no whoa, go, stop, nothing, you know, easy. That's, if you guys don't have this, that's how you teach your wives or kids how to do it. Where you use that? I absolutely love that feature. And you change the angle. Perfect. Excellent. Look at that. Can't get better than that, boys and girls. Put the toll mirror out, now I can park it. Because I think what's going to happen is the step is going to go here, and then the enclosed is going to go there. Now most of you probably know, but not everybody, because some are new to the channel. That step deck I bought brand new. 07, 08. Might have been 06, I'm not really sure. It's the year I started with Whitmire Express. Bought it brand new. Ran it till the cross members went out. Started working on it at the old shop. And watch this, the truck will come up. I ordered the airbags in this thing. I didn't speed that up. That's how quick it works. But they needed to put cross members in it. Started working on it at the old shop, and that was the end of it. So we're going to continue working on it here. It's not sure when, but at least it's out of the way back there.
dropped that Chronic album and everybody started talking. That's when everybody met Snoop Dogg and all of them guys. I always wanted a car just like that. Well, I found this one in Atlanta and I wanted to put hydraulics on it, but I never did. But I certainly got the right wheels for it. And I ran them until the tires got bald. Of course, stuff like this is real hard to keep an alignment on, especially when the car's old and wore out anyway. But this tire's always had a leak, so every time I need to move it, I need to air the tire up. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this car. I do like it as a driver. I enjoy driving it, believe it or not. It has been registered in about... I think the last sticker on the plate is 22. It doesn't matter how much air I put in it, it's going to be done anyway. Well, as it'll move and start, then I'm happy. But yeah, I want to put a new front end on it. At least get new springs to car leans. So if I just put springs and uh, new front end, ball joints, bearings, all that. Next on the list is the old motorhome. The transmission fluid eating bugger that it is. Don't oh. anybody laugh at my old motorhome, but this sucker went all the way down to Florida Keys and back. Towing that black 79 Cadillac. It did a damn good job at it too, so. And it did a damn good job too, so. I intend on putting this thing back to work, hauling the razor around a little bit, and then letting the boys use it from, well, whenever they want it, I guess, including whenever I want it. That's the idea. But for now, first things first. It leaks fluid, so you gotta add fluid or it ain't gonna go anywhere. Seems like a crime to put two quarts in it just to start it and move it from here inside the building, but it's too heavy to push. So I think the first thing I'm gonna have the boys do is brake job on it. Rear brakes cylinder, we're, the rear brake uh, wheel cylinders are seized. Hydraulically, everything works fine, but the rear brakes don't come on at all unless you step on the parking brake or emergency brake is commonly mis, uh, misnamed. So That's first. Then I want to maybe winter time this winter I'll take the tranny out. I'll send it out to get rebuilt. And then uh, I got to address the body rot on the top portion on the, the bed all up on top here. The corners, the typical camper, the corner wood rots away because it's made out of wood, not metal. Typical. You guys might notice this cord under here goes to a battery tender. Kept the battery charged. Enough to sit here over the winter. The cord hung in it, so. Most everything I own has one of these on it, usually. Now 
This is a 77 Ford E350 with a coachman body. 460 for an engine, a Ford Big Lock, and a uh, C6 transmission. Obviously two wheel drive. Now I'll let you guys know something. Uh, fuel pumps, factory fuel pump, engine block mounted, they don't last long. I don't know if it's they're just new old stock and they're not taking the ethanol and the gas or uh, you know what, I don't know. So I put a Carter electric pump on the fuel rail, I'm sorry, on the frame rail underneath there. So all I use turn the key, turn it on, it came on. So the fuel pump came on, it's quiet, you're not gonna hear it. So I'll give it a couple seconds and then I'll pump it. Now there's no choke on this thing either. It's a manual choke Edelbrock carburetor sitting on top that had a home making adapter for it to go on the Motorcraft factory intake. where it's going to stay for a little while.
this one. Now I gotta go get the repo boat. Now the thing with the reap now the thing with the repo boat is uh, I'm gonna have to get into that in the future. But uh, I took it in on work for uh, you know outside work. This is right before we went out west with the camper, went to Deadwood and Sturgis area and all that with the bikes. And after that, the guy disappeared on me. Now I've gotten paid for work I've done, but he never came to get his boat. How long ago was that? And I had to keep it inside the old shop because it was heated. Uh, boat was not winterized. So that's been years. It's been abandoned. And I found out dude's in jail. So he's doing a 15-year bid in a federal pen. So now what do I do with this boat? I can't legally make it disappear. You know, so what do I do? Oh, well, there it is. So I dragged it over here. I'll explain a little bit. Let's go ahead and then, let's go ahead and hook up to it, and then I'll explain what uh, what's the deal with it. Hope there's air in them tires still. so the water will drain out the scuttle plug. Now, when the guy brought it to me the last time as I backed it in the old shop, that axle broke. I might attempt to fix it. Might attempt to just replace it. Not sure, but it's got to go inside. See if this tire got air. There's air to it. The other side, if I remember right, is removed too. Yeah, it's removed too. All right, there's air in it.
might be asking, where's your boat? Well, mine's in a storage building. This is the repo boat. So I'm probably gonna have to do a whole video on this thing. Uh, not maybe a whole video, but touch base more on it. But uh, long story short, I blocked out the numbers on the bow, so because that's not the owner's. Well, that's let's restart that. A police officer bought the boat from a guy in Minnesota. Those numbers go to the guy in Minnesota. He's not part of this. The police officer titled the boat, registered the boat, brought it to me, then took it back. After I did some work, he ordered a stern drive for it, brought it back with the new stern drive. I went away on vacation and I never heard from the guy again. Turns out he's locked up in a federal pen for 15 years. We'll get into that. Um, so what he did was he was hauling it with a Suburban and he had a hitch. A lot of people leave the hitches in the receivers and they'll rust in there and he can't get them out. Well, that's what he did. And it was a drop hitch where this needed a raised up hitch. Now these axles are probably at the right weight. These are 3,500 pound axles. Personally, I would have put something heavier in there, which I might do. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. But I prefer actually 3,500 pounds with three of them. Anyway. What he did is he towed it with the nose down. These springs are way too light. So he put blocks of wood between the axles and the frame of the trailer. And with all the with the nose down, all the weight was on that front axle driving it from where he lived to my old shop. And as I backed it into the shop, the axle gave out and it broke the spindle out of the axle or bent it, broke the welds basically. So I don't know for the time being if I could just order a third axle and fix that axle. Or if I just order two axles, not sure. But I want to get it in and at least take it apart and determine what in the heck I'm going to do with it. Um, but yeah, you would think a cop would know better. But then again, um, this particular cop couldn't keep out of jail uh, for 15 years in a, on a federal beef. So either way, I'm in the process of repoing it. And uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet.
What's up everybody, FSC Trucking. You know, there's a lot of behind the scenes that goes on here 